This video will explain how to translate statements with two predicates, um, but ones that don't follow the standard formats, that don't conform to the patterns we saw in Module 14. So consider first the statement, some things are either tasty or fattening. So this is an existential statement. So we're going to use an existential quantifier. And we have the predicates TX for X is tasty and FX for X is fattening. But we see that in between these two predicates we have an OR statement. So we need to represent that. So we put, instead of the usual ampersand in between the two predicates in the statement, we put a wedge because it's not saying some things are both tasty and fattening. It's saying they're one or the other. I mean, they could be both, but it's saying, look, they're either one or the other. It has an explicit or in it, so we need to represent that in our translation. Next we have, some things are neither tasty nor fattening. So this has neither and nor in it. So after we do the existential, we're going to do it like a neither nor statement. So we're going to say it's false, that it's tasty, or that it's fattening. There are some things that it's false, that they're either tasty or fattening. Or, if you prefer this formulation, we can say there are some things that are not tasty and they're not fattening. Oops. So either way is a fine way to ta translate uh, the statement. Some things are neither tasty nor fattening. Next, we have the statement, everything is either tasty or fattening. So we'll have the universal quantifier, and we'll have the predicate TX and the predicate FX. But instead of putting an arrow in between that like we usually would, we're again going to represent this OR that's been set. So we put a wedge. So for every X, either X is tasty or X is fattening. Oh, that should say, everything is both tasty and fattening. Not tasty. Sorry, that's a typo. So this is going to say, for every X, it's both tasty and it's fattening. So we represent that and that's been put explicitly there. Okay, and finally we have a thing is tasty if and only if it is fattening. So we say, for every x, it's tasty if and only if it is fattening. So we represent that explicit if and only if in our translation. 